Hello again and welcome to today's webinar. I uh, just wanted to make sure that it was all recording uh, and it, uh, apparently David tells me it, uh, it is, it is uh, doing so. So um, as I said, welcome to today's webinar. <laughs> Apologies for the slight mishap when the, on starting. Um, right, it's a beautiful day here in, um, well we're down in Hampshire actually. What is it going to be today with David? Tropical Thursday? Torrid Thursday? Uh, Hottest day before. ever? Uh, we shall see. Anyway, uh, markets are, all, all, uh, are also pretty hot at the moment and of course it's uh, it's really it's uh, ECB Euro Day but uh, we'll address that uh, when we have a look at the charts. But before we start, as always, we have to look at the disclaimer. As you know, this can be a very risky business so please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. And as I mentioned David earlier on, he's sitting next to me, my husband, my trading partner in crime, and we will be looking at the markets and the charts through the prism of volume price analysis together with our fabulous quantum trading tools. Volume price analysis, I know I say this at the beginning and I know you know some of you may have heard this already but we do have a lot of new people coming to these webinars who may not even know about this methodology and it's the methodology that we have used for many years now and it's the sort of our take on the technical analysis uh, 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 from point of view and it's really understanding the relationship between the price action and uh, the volume and by the volume I'm we uh, define volume as activity now those of you perhaps have uh, not thought of using volume in Forex before will say well how could you possibly use volume because there is no central exchange for the um, for the Forex market so not the spot Forex market and you're absolutely right what we do we have a proxy for volume and that is tick activity and whilst it is not 100% it is certainly good enough to be able to uh, tell us give us a clue as um, as to where the market is going next and we've got lots of examples to show you uh, both um, on hit, um, what has happened on the charts and also Dave, what David and I like to do is uh, actually show it in action at the live edge of the market which we do in all our webinars. Now with the Forex uh, market that's just the technical analysis side. To that you must add the fundamental uh, landscape, the fundamental releases uh, and hugely important, huge uh, um, drivers of the price action that you see on the charts but we've taken it one step further and we've included what we call the related markets because the individual currencies currency pairs have a very close relationship with uh, uh, markets outside of forex and you know, a very quick example Canadian dollar very closely tied to the price of oil. What we've done is we bundled all this information in a whole series of books which is available up on Amazon. This is what we call the Forex uh, Trading Library. It covers all the topics that I've, that I've mentioned. It's, I think it's $9.99. It is the e-book version, but you don't have to start with the library. If you just start with the VPA, I think it's $4.99, as I said, on Amazon. It's, there's the general one on, on VPA and there's one specifically targeted for for the forex market so as I said for $4.99 um, can you start with that and, and trade yes absolutely because it gives you a fan we believe a fantastic foundation for as I said this understanding not only of price action but its interaction with volume um, this is a slide from our forex program we've actually taken it one step further the and again, a question we're asked all the time, can I just use the books uh, to start or I'm, I'm an existing trader, will the books you know, give me enough to, to, uh, you know, to move my trading forward? And the, and the short answer is uh, yes, and we would always suggest that you always start with the books for the sole reason um, that you really have to decide whether VPA is the methodology is for you and whether you actually buy into this notion that it is the relationship between price action and volume which determines uh, you know gives you can anticipate what is likely to happen next I you know, we can only present the evidence to you show you the charts etc etc but ultimately it's your decision if you then have bought the books and want to take it one step further what we've done is we've put together this very comprehensive uh, forex program where 
it's it's a, a big deep dive into if you like the book is the is 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 the kind of level one if you like the foundation the program then takes it a lot lot further and just to give you an indication of the kind of um of, of the content of the, the the depth of the range of content you've got to have to work you you'll be working your way through at least uh, seven thousand slides david yeah, and another question we ask is, oh my goodness, how long is that likely to take me? Um, <laughs> you know, and it's it's really how much time do you have? If even if you just do an hour or a couple of hours a day, we reckon about three months, three yeah. to six. Yeah, if you do it consistently, um, certainly. But and by the end of it, you will understand really what makes not just the markets move in general, but what this market moves in how this market and why this market moves in particular as you see forex sits at the heart of the market as part of the program you also get uh, a complete uh, the complete uh, quantum trading tools you can buy the tools individually uh, in bundles uh, or or as a complete package and these are the tools that you use apply are applicable to uh, all markets and all time frames but for forex we've developed these four very specific ones which we call the currency dashboard you don't have to buy the dashboard you can just start with one the one we always start with is the currency strength indicator which is the one here on the left which is all these lines i will show you why uh, why we developed them how they can help you in your trading and particularly today because i've had um, some questions some comments about multiple time frames and um you know why um uh, to what extent we should look at the daily time frame for uh you know looking for potential setups in the faster time frames well not only do the tools highlight these potential setups in a blink of an eye say if you're having to look at uh, 28 charts but i also want to go more in depth into multiple time frames and the, not the pros and cons but some of the um some of the issues you have to be aware of when you are using maybe the daily to give you that bias that that, that influence what you think is going to be on the faster time frame so something we'll talk about in the uh, in the webinar uh, later on and the tools are all available from our company quantumtrading.com as i said buy one bundle full package if you buy the full package when we develop new indicators they are automatically added to your package so you never uh, you never have to pay any more for uh, you know new indicators that come along you get 24 7 support and all upgrades are included also covered by a seven day money back guarantee they're available for mt45 ninja trader trading view and we're working on trade station if you buy just one just to step back a second and you then decide you want to upgrade maybe to a bundle or you want the full package whatever you've paid for we will use that as a credit to uh, you know what you want to buy as it were so if you start with a CSI and you think oh I really do want the, the dashboard obviously what you've paid for will uh, be um, netted off against the cost of the uh, current uh, currency dashboard and the bundles we we've, we've just put these together but we will all, always do special prices so if there's, there's something there that you know well actually I want this one and that one but you don't have a bundle price just drop uh, uh, David an email that's david at quantumtrading.com and we will always give you a, a special price the site where you'll find all the details is quantumtrading.com the complete uh, forex program as I said you have the full package of indicators again any credit for anything you may have purchased purchased from us and again it's all you need to know to trade uh, forex with confidence and that is a quantumtradingeducation.com have I missed anything out, David? Anything you want to add to that? No, no. <laughs> I'm just going to turn myself off, pass you over to David, and I just set up the charts. And I said, I want to, we've got the ECB, we've obviously got what's been happening um, over here in the UK with uh, Boris Johnson taking over as the new Prime Minister. And um, that's what they call it, the night of the long knives again. You know, his, uh, his wholesale clear out of the previous uh, cabinet, which uh, seems to have uh, got a lot of people uh, very hot under the collar. But what we want to see is actually how is, how is that reflected in the pound and whether there is, um, you know, is there going to be a change of sentiment to the pound or is it simply going to carry on uh, relentlessly lower? But, you know, the charts and the indicators will tell us. I'll just pass over to David.
Hi everyone, and a, I was going to say a very warm welcome. Um, well, you know what I mean. Um, it's a boiling welcome. Uh, what are they calling it today? Tropical Thursday or something. Um, it's supposed to be the warmest day on record, but we will see. Anyway, it's a beautiful day here in Hampshire. Hope it's nice where you are. I'm sure it is. If you're in the UK, it's wonderful. Pretty much up and down the country. Uh, great to have you here. If this is your first time, then uh, you're you're very welcome. I can see we've got a lot of regulars. We've got a lot of people who are already on the program. So uh, great to have you on board too. Uh, if this is your first time, we run as a two-hander. Anna's on the MT5 platform. I've got the Ninja Trader running on my side, and we will flip-flop between the two and see what we can find. If you have any questions, please just drop them in the chat box. Happy to answer them. If they're short questions in there, longer questions we'll answer on air for you. I'm going to pass back to Anna, and we will get going. I actually got the Aussie yen up uh, on my on my profile because there's been some nice moves in uh, in the Aussie. In fact, the Aussie has been uh, selling off uh, uh, quite sharply against uh, a lot of its uh, a lot of its peers, and that's primarily on the um, on what I think the governor Governor Rowe has been uh, has been speaking uh, earlier on today. But very very quickly, let me just uh, about these multiple time frames and the daily chart, and it really is as a result of uh, is that I get lots and lots and lots of emails uh, from traders traders of uh, all it, you know levels of experience some who've read the book others who maybe you know inquiring about about the books inquiring about the indicators anyway this came up uh, came about from various questions so if you like it's an answer to a, a whole group of questions let me just go to the pound pairs because that really is where it explains it i am conscious of the fact obviously we've got the um uh, we've got London opening soon, but it's actually pertinent to that as well. The question was the uh, the the question the, the the comment was well, I am a I, I'm a I, I'm a trader. I'm let's uh, I'm a, a, a day trader. Uh, didn't specify whether it was a, a scalper or a, a day trader because there is a difference between the two. In fact, before I do that. Whenever I get a question from someone saying, you know, what should I do? What time frame should I uh, should I trade? I was I always go back and say, well, you have to define yourself by you, your time frames define what kind of trader you are. So very very broadly, and because there's no consensus on this, somewhere in in all my resources, I do have. Um, uh, like a little um, like a little table if you like of if you're a scalper you know what are the time frames if you're an intraday trader you know what are the time frames you look at short term medium long term i will i will try and pull it out and and maybe put it up on my um on my forex trading facebook page but these are just what david and i would would consider if you're a scalper it's not so much it is the time frames that you that uh, are, are key here so you could be trading non time based charts but you'll obviously be trading the probably the fastest charts that you have available on, on your uh, platform but the other definition to do with a scalper is that you'll be going in multiple times so you will see an opportunity you will jump on it and you will come out you'll go in and you'll come out now that doesn't suit everybody because you know it is it can be quite tiring uh you know you 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 have to have very high focus very high concentration levels so again these time frames um uh, you know it's partly determined by what what you are most comfortable with and i and and i take issue with anyone who says that you know you, you can't trade the faster time frames uh, because it's very tiring because you haven't got focus because you're too old you know there's there's hundreds of reasons it really does depend on what suits you and in some extent also um, the time you know if you've got we've got lots of traders who just have maybe a window uh, maybe coming up you know between the European and London open and they just want to try trading maybe in sometime in the future when they have the luxury of more time David and I have, um, they can perhaps move on to uh, the slightly slower time frames. The beauty about volume price analysis is that it's applicable to across all time frames. It doesn't matter whether you're on the one minute, the five minute, the 15, uh, the, the, what you're looking for on those charts is identical to what you'd be looking for on the hours, the four hours, the eights, the dailies, etc. So that's what I would define a scalper. David, would you agree with that one? It's more than multiple you're going in. Intraday, 
is basically you will be trading, you'll be going in during the, the, the 24 hour session, wherever your session happens to be, which you will close out. So the time frames that you will probably use for that, you may still use the ones, the, the, the very fast time frames, the one, the fives, the fifteens, but you will po possibly even benchmark that against something like that is happening on the hourly, the, the four hour, and you may also look at the daily chart. But as I said, we really have to look at the daily chart and because it's not as straightforward as we think. Then I would say short term. Short term is really, I would define as a days, and with an, a, but certainly not more than the week. The medium term, I would say days and possibly week, and long term, I would say position trend. Trading. Would you agree with that on that, David? Yeah, and that's it. So that go back to the. So there we are. So into one of those categories. And the other thing about it is, people say, can you be more than one type of trader? And the, the short answer is yes, you can. You can. Can you be a scalper and possibly look at long-term and medium, um, uh, uh, long-term position trading and medium? Well, you can. The, the the problem is though, if you try and do it in one account, so if it's possible and you want to sort of practice the art of trading by using the faster time frames, what David and I would suggest is that you restrict it to maybe a small account somewhere, literally just a, a few, you know, as, as little as possible, trade very small uh, positions, i.e. micro lots. In fact, you can trade micro lots even on, on the longer term uh, time frames. But you can, so you're, you're, so you have a, you have a, an, account where you do this type of trading and you try it out and see if it suits you and you you know you 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 practice your skill it's like taking a car out and going on a, a you know a, a, what you call it a skid pan because you want to sort of um, uh, uh, improve your reaction times as it were but actually you don't drive like that every day you drive in a normal way so that's how I that's how this is our suggestion so anything you want to add to that David okay. right get back getting back to the daily chart and what does the daily chart tell uh, tell us about what is likely to happen well the first thing we have to remember about the daily chart is the daily chart is the sum of three separate trading sessions and there's the one thing about the forex market that you have to really get to grips with is that each trading session doesn't you know it, it stands on its own it's like a, a, a it's like a, a it's like a session it has a, a, a physical uh, beginning and a physical end it opens and closes and the sentiment that is expressed in that one session out of three may not necessarily be what is the if you like the overall sentiment that you see on the daily chart so this idea that this very I think this overly simplistic idea that's that you can take the daily chart you know the first thing you, you go to to is look at the daily chart and you look at it and you say oh all right well you know that's cl that's clearly a trend I mean the pound pairs have been an enormous trend a uh, downtrend um, since well whenever it was here since they moved away from the VPOC which is back in or well, the beginning of May really and this is all obviously to do uh, with Brexit etc cetera, etc cetera. so you say okay well I look at I look at the trend on the daily chart or the bias of the daily chart and that's it right and what I'm going to do because I'm on the faster time frames I'm only going to look at those opportunities that are in sync or in line with what I see on the daily chart which on the surface seems yeah well that seems a reasonable approach to trading maybe you look at the five minute chart the 15 minute chart and you go down and you would look at maybe candle patterns you would look at whatever whatever criteria you would look for the problem is, as I said, the daily chart is the sum total of these three very different, very separate uh, sessions. Now, by the end of the day, the, the candle that is, uh, that is produced by the daily chart may, if you like, uh, you know, be a continuation of the overall sentiment. But what you will be doing, if you are on the faster time frames, you will be missing an awful lot of opportunities. And what it also does is it also can explain why some traders to say, well, you know, I, I I can see it's bearish and I've been looking for bearish setups. And every time I went in, I was stopped out because it was going the other way. So by the end of the day, by the end of the 24 hour session, you look back and you think, oh, I've taken all these trades. Actually, 
you know, they, they weren't, they didn't really turn out the way I thought, but I was going in the, in the general direction of the trend. And it's simply because during the session that you may have been trying to take a trade, the sentiment for whatever reason, for a very short period of time was contra to what is, was happening on the daily chart. That's not to say you don't look at the daily chart for context. Of course you do. You have to be aware of it. But in trading, there's an awful lot of what we call cognitive dissonance, which is you have to hold two or maybe more completely contra, uh, contradictory thoughts in your head at the same time. And if you like, the pound Swiss is a, a perfect example of this because yesterday's candles we can see here, by the end of the session, had actually uh, conformed, I was trying to uh, try and build it up again. There we are, so we can see it a little bit. This candle here, this is yesterday's candle. Oh, go away. <laughs> Emails keep coming. As you can see here, has conformed to the overall bias of the daily uh, of the daily. But but that is at the end of the day. But look by how much it actually moved higher. So there was in that candle a re a, a substantial amount of pound buying. Now, the other argument against if you like, going against the the, uh, the sentiment, if you like, the trend, if you like, on the daily chart. I, I'm, I'm using the daily chart because that's the one that most traders look at. But you could look at something like the eight hour if, if you wanted to on the day on the day. Is is well, you know, it's awfully it's awfully interesting you saying that. And I see a setup, and I and I go long, and I, I get stopped at C. I should have, you know, I should have stuck to the to the longer term sentiment. And it comes down to risk. And I do accept that if you are, you know, when you see a trend, as you can have seen on the, uh, the, the British pound pairs, to take a trade in the opposite direction because the setup, you know, the, the chart set up from a VPA perspective, our quantum traders, our quantum indicators are saying to you, actually, this is the perfectly valid setup. You know, you really got to go for it. Um, you are, you will be taking more risk. Sometimes that risk pays off, sometimes it doesn't, but you have, but being aware of the risk of itself will tell you that you are not going to be in that trade for very long. So that's my uh, view on that one. Now, the other issue you have to look at, and in fact, let's move to the uh, Euro pairs. That's fairly straightforward when a chart is in a, a, a you know, it's a, a, a definable, discernible trend. Just to go back to the pound pairs, this is, a, this is for, if you like, scalpers, intraday traders. Well, what about if you are maybe a medium midterm trader, you're looking to hold the position over for two to three days. Well, you would look at yesterday and you'd say, well, actually, you know, the trend is still lower. This is what is meant by uh, uh, selling the rallies or buying the dips, and uh, you know these expressions that you hear in trading. Really, they only they 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 actually you, you put them into effect depending on the time time frames that you are looking to trade. Now, that's when you have a discernible trend. If we look at the euro euro dollar here, okay, let's close it down a little bit more. Now. That is not a discernible trend. That is no way, that doesn't look anything like the, uh, the, the pound Swiss or any of the pound pays. It is, the euro is essentially in a very, you know, in a very, uh, in a sideways uh, uh, price action. If I close it down even further, let's have a look. Let's have a look, move it even further. Here we are. Th that was a trend. Move sideways, you get, it looks like you get a bit of a breakout, you get a bit of a trend, move straight back up into another trend, a bit more sideways, you know, but this bit here that we're looking at the moment, we have the floor and ceiling very, very uh, clearly defined. So, so what, you know, using the daily chart to say, well, okay, I'm going into the, I'm going into the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the general uh, um, uh, the general bias, the general influence, when in all honesty, you may have big candles on a particular day and here certainly from the break from uh, the VPOC here at 1246. So what you have is uh, certainly on an intraday basis, you may have, um, uh, you may have opportunities, but uh, you know, this is not a, a discernible trend in over the longer, uh, over the longer term. So it, sideways trading um, 
can be more frustrating simply because you can have uh, so let me have a, a good let's say a good ex, a good example here let's have a look you, what I'm trying to say is you may have minor trends I wouldn't say micro trends but you may have a trend within the overall sideways movement but you have to accept that you know at any moment it you know the next day's candle may simply not uh, um, uh, you know pick up the sentiment from the day before etc cetera, etc cetera. so it is sideways is going to be in some ways a little bit more tricky but actually uh, confirms that the bias of, of the daily chart is it's awfully interesting but it's much more important to understand the structure of the chart and what the chart is actually telling you to be able to um, which will help you then uh, decide whether uh, on the on the faster time frames how much if you like credence you're going to place on what is happening on say the daily chart right I don't think I want to say any more to that David do you want to say do you want to add anything to that yeah. and with regard to sideways to consolidation periods and, uh, and and range bound markets what you're also looking for all the time is that you know this is quite a wide range what is it is one uh, 1390 down to uh, 11 I mean that is a that is a big overall range on the day some of these candles have been very very uh, uh, narrow kind of reflecting the fact that it's not just in in sideways range bound over the day but it's also sideways range bound even uh, on on the, the daily candle because the candles are very narrow what we then have to wait for when markets are in this type of chart structure is that they're not going to stay here forever and obviously if you're looking at the you know if you're looking to trade the daily chart then you know you're going to have to have an awful lot of patience um, I mean I've read comments that you know it's reaching a point 11 1106 you can see here it's bounced off twice here got a nice double bottom here um, so is it going to get to 11, 1106, uh, 1103? Well, today it may or may not, depending on what Draghi says. And the other thing about the euro you have to remember is that the the uh, ECB or, or Draghi, they the markets have a certain expectation of um, you know, like today it's well, you know, there's more more. QE, the interest rate is expected to go further into, into negative territory. So the market's built up for, if you like, a, 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 a negative view, a bearish view. And suddenly he'll say something in the, uh, in the press conference and the thing will go completely the other way. But looking at this from, um, from the perspective, yes, it is in, a, in consolidation. You've got a double, a double bottom here. If it breaks through, this sort of strong support platform, then the chances are it will go uh, lower. So patience is uh, is really important here. Getting back to our indicators, this is what this is the trend monitor. How do we know this is moving sideways and is very very choppy? Some, you know, admittedly, some of the candles are a nice wide range of candles. You can see the constant change in colours. Uh, you know, moving from red to uh, uh, red to uh, dark blue, back to red, dark blue, dark red. Then you have a little bit of a you have a little bit of a run up. So you have a little bit of a trend going up and to. <clears throat> Uh, and a, a little bit of a blue, uh, blue, then it goes back to red again over here. So as I said, really uh, moving sideways can be very frustrating, but this, this is much more the norm in most markets and in most currency pairs. So when when we come down to the faster time frames, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the five minute chart here. Let's have a look. Oh, going the other way. Let's pull it right up, and this is exactly what uh, what I said um, what I said earlier. It's moving sideways, and you know suddenly at the London Open, uh, what did we have? We had a move away from the uh, uh, volume point of control, volatility, and then we have a ton of buying coming in. And as, if you're a scalper and you're a you know a shorter term trader, looking at the daily chart and thinking, oh well, it's a it's a bearish bias. I'm only gonna I'm only gonna sell. Fine. You would have said I'm going to sell there but look at that that suddenly comes in what do you do 
well, you know, if you're a scalper, you're a fast, you're, you're, uh, you know, you're on the very fast charts. You have to react to what you actually see on the chart. So uh, the reason, as I said, uh, the reason I wanted to spend a little bit of time on that, because as I said, it's much easier for me to um, to record these uh, rather than write them. And I can go back to my emails and say, please just listen to uh, this webinar recording. You know, this between at this particular point and it actually answers all your questions right I'm sure I'm looking through my notes so you might miss good moves you could end up with a series of losses I think I've covered everything David anything else you want to cover on that no. all right and for myself what have I been looking at David's got David's actually got some some fantastic multiple uh, time frames out there I've actually looked at the Aussie the one for the Aussie for me let's have a look do, do, do. I think I was looking at the Aussie pound it's Aussie yen and Aussie pound let's have a look at the Aussie yen I had both the Aussie pound and the Aussie yen up and how my selection because I what do I classify myself as I've actually got uh, we've got multiple accounts on one account I've actually got trades running they've been running for days and weeks so has David and then I have another account where I just go and try out um, I you know look at new ways of looking up at our indicators and it will just be literally, you know, go in, go out. This is where I use the Renko. In fact, it was the Aussie yen that I was looking at here at the time. This is the 30 minute. So this is my, if you like, my benchmark chart is the 30 minute chart. The Aussie yen was actually down at the bottom. What does the CSI say? Yep, the Aussie yen was uh, was falling. It's actually turned up since uh, since I was looking. The, and the yen has also turned over. This is since we started or since I started looking at this pair at um, uh, at six o'clock this morning and this is where you start you start with the currency strength indicator what are the individual currencies doing and just to go up to the so put the daily on here have a look. I've got to undock it have a look and this is what I said earlier so the what the currency strength indicator does it gives you an immediate uh, snapshot a summary of what the individual currencies are doing we can see that so the bias has been a buy of the of the dollar a sell of the euro the pound here has been turning up this is what i'm saying this is a turning up contra to those beautiful you know downtrends that we've seen in the pound and as i said if you just look at the trend and you, you would be constantly looking to short the pound which is fine if perhaps if you have a medium to longer term view and you think this is just a you know this is just a pullback i'm not you know and fine but if you're an intraday trader and on the faster time frames you have to take advantage of the trading opportunities that come to you and in fact the uh, the um, uh, the New Zealand is turning over and the uh, Australian dollar is turning over and go back to the 30 but at this very moment in time there is buying of the obviously not so much of the New Zealand and what we've done with the matrix you have it on the same chart and what you can do it then picks out those pairs where there is greater movement so we have the pound New Zealand at the top and as I said I was looking at the Aussie yen it was down here when I looked at it at uh, 6.30 this morning. And what do I have? I have a Renko. This is the move lower. I went to a bit of consolidation and now it looks to be moving high. It hasn't changed to bright blue quite yet. It may not do. It may simply be a little bit of a fake move and the down move may continue lower. What does the three minute chart tell me? This is the move away. This is uh, uh, this is row. This is the, um, um, uh, the the volatility overnight. Retreat to within the spread of these volatility candles. A l quite a lot of sideways movement, and then carried on lower, but actually didn't get below uh, 75, 27. And this is the little move higher that we're seeing. Here. That may be enough for you, but you have to accept you could be trading, uh, uh, you know, counter trend trading but you know honestly we're always counter trend trading again somewhere along the line you know the um the chart will be doing the exact opposite of the time frame that you are in at the moment and looking at the daily chart here this is at the vpoc now this this is actually quite an important uh, um uh, level for the aussie uh, for the aussie yen it's it cannot get above really uh, 75 75 70 is the volume point of control this is volume price and time this is the time 
that this pair has been in this range. Now, the longer it stays here, then when that move does eventually happen, if it is going to be down to the downside, uh, this is Wyckoff's second door, then we could see the start of a fantastic trend. The Aussie yen is also going to be uh, um, influenced, and again, related markets, with what is happening uh, with the uh, uh, the trade talk, the tariff talks, and very heavily influenced with general overall sentiment, which is positive at the moment, but there's no decision, there's no agreement between China and, and America. That is really key to what is going to happen uh, longer term to the markets, and pairs such as the Aussie yen will reflect that. Right, I'm going to start now, I'm going to pass over to David, because um, you know, and thank you for your patience, but as I said, I have a lot of questions to answer on what I've just said. Can I move over to you? Yeah. Thanks, darling. I'm just going to switch over to uh, Ninja Trader. Um, hopefully, you can uh, see my screen in a minute. I'm just looking over on Anna's. Yeah, there we go. Okay, just move that out of the way. Just uh, I've I've been uh, hunting around various uh, uh, opportunities, um, particularly around the Aussie, the Euro, um, and yes, I'd, I'll take a look at which pair was it? Uh, the pound cat. I'll take a look at the pound cat in a minute for you. Yeah, sure. Hold on a minute. All right, no problem. Okay, uh, let's just start with the Aussie yen. And just picking up on what Anna was saying, this is the I've mentioned this chart several times before. Um, and the the it really is uh, in a way it just defines what um, the 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 longer term aspect of the chart really is about. We've got this very narrow channel of uh, of price action. Volume point of control is sat bang in the middle, and we've got these two very strong regions, one above, one below. And the Aussie yen cannot break through this 76, 76, 20 area. Equally to the downside, you've got a floor of uh, support that's uh, building also. And it's a classic example of using the daily chart to give you a heads up as an intraday trader, or indeed, if you're a longer term trader, uh, taking that opportunity when it comes along. Patience required. But once it breaks out of this trading range, then given the amount of time that the uh, pair has been trading here, this is a, a quite an extensive time, then according to, to Wyckoff's uh, law of cause and effect, that this should develop into a decent trend. To the upside, if we move to the upside, we've got a very, very strong platform of support then in place. To the downside, equally a pretty strong ceiling of resistance. In either way, it's not a question of guessing which way, you just have to wait and be patient, wait for the move away, wait for the volume to confirm the move. And then you're looking at the chart in terms of a move to the upside, if it breaks to the upside, we've got low volume nose here pretty much all the way up. So it should be fairly straightforward. Much of that will, of course, depend on what is going on in terms of indices and uh, risk sentiment, longer term, of course. Got the indices here. This is what's going on right now. This is on five minute. This is on the US indices, the YM, the NQ and the ES. These are the futures contracts for those particular markets. And what we're seeing right now, we saw this uh, this sort of little rally. This is uh, the nice thing with Ninja is this is printing real time. So what you're looking at here, here we go. What you're looking at here is is real time, local time UK. This is six o'clock. This is when we pretty much uh, got to the screens. This is seven o'clock and we've just gone through the London Open. You can see the uh, the increase in volume. As we've gone into into the London session, that's reflected on Globex as well. It's not just um, peculiar to uh, forex markets; it also is reflected in related markets. You can see the the bearish sentiment that's uh, that's taking hold. We've got a volatility trigger up here. If this moves further south, we're through this uh, minor platform here, which could act as support. If not through there, down into a low volume node and down to a much uh, deeper level of potential support lower down the chart. But that's what sentiment's doing at the moment. It's not a major move. It's not a crash. You'd be looking at, obviously, not only the US markets. You'd be looking at what's going on, certainly in terms of Europe, what's happening on the DAX, what's going on in terms of uh, FTSE 100, 250, and so on and so forth, and equally uh, how, the US, how the Australian markets have closed, the Japanese markets, and everything else, to get a view on sentiment. Just go back to the Aussie yen again. <clears throat> there we go. 
that's why we're seeing that move lower right now that that weakness has come back in on the 10 minute we had the uh, the volatility trigger this was overnight in terms of what uh, governor Lowe was uh, speaking about big move south everyone's jumping in then they're trapped because uh, the volatility has come in good strong volume under that candle the market makers are playing in that particular market nice opportunity to trap everyone uh, into that weak position and what the volatility indicator does is it moves in real time so as soon as that price action has moved outside the average true range bang volatility trigger uh, appears and you know for a fact you're in volatility territory and therefore the market makers are likely to cause you grief because they're going to either reverse the the uh, sentiment or at the very least they're going to move into a congestion phase which is what we've got here once that market moves away then you're back into regular trading and waiting for the next volatility candle to deliver but that's the trap move with the volatility we're seeing the the sentiment at the moment as i say the sentiment on the uh, this is a one minute but it just reflects the fact that what we're seeing on indices that weakness is, is reflected here we had a two bar reversal at the top classical two bar uh, up and down overlay one on the other and on two minute chart you'd have an up thrust with good volume underneath this is all weakness trying to rally weak trying to rally weak trying to rally again it's weak now we're getting down to the volume point of control so what do we expect to see we expect to see at the very least congestion because we're now trading in a zone which will dictate what happens next in terms of congestion we know for a fact the market is going to at the very least pause there because there's a huge amount of volume in this region it's the heaviest volume on the chart because the volume point of control is the fulcrum of the market and in essence what is going on here is the market has now reached price agreement if you will where there's no strong bias either bullish or bearish for the time being that will change it has to because markets don't stay uh, sitting in one place forever and then of course you've got all the various levels up and down you've got the volume profile the histogram which gives you a heads up on what is likely to happen next the trend monitor as you can see is bright red so we transition through uh, in this in this case we've gone through the classic uh, color changes we went from bullish into a darker blue into a darker red and out the other side into the bearish uh, trend lower and in addition to that you've also got the trend monitor the trend line rather which comes with the trend monitor which is helping to give you perspective on the strength of that trend but the fact we're around the volume point of control means we're going to see congestion for a bit at the very least and just picking up on what Anna was saying about using multiple time frames the reason one of the 6,000 reasons you use multiple time frames is that you will see things in other time frames which help you to give you heads up as to what is going on in your time frame again we've got the volume point of control so we expect congestion not much going to go on for the time being in terms of certainly from a scalping perspective if you're a longer term trader this is all totally irrelevant you're not really not looking at a three minute chart if you're out on the on the four hours or the eight hours whatever it may be this is of of no interest whatsoever it's just the part and parcel daily intra, intraday movements of, of price action this is the london open we get uh, a, quite a dramatic increase in volume we get this weak candle here effort to rally nice wick to the upper body good volume because we're into london in terms of comparison we're looking at this range at the moment because we're comparing like with like we can certainly look at this region in terms of what went on in terms of europe this is uh, seven o'clock here this is europe so we've got an hour of europe here and this is basically far east asia and this is the pickup in volume over on the left hand side uh, overnight as the australian news was filtering its way out so you get a huge pickup in volume there as well it's all comparative just see how this goes for the weakness we've got this uh, potential platform below just a, a pip or two below here which uh, could come into play and if we break through that one then you can see just eyeballing it you've got a decent platform here of potential support which has come in before another nice reversal there if we get through that then we've got a low volume node below and that should move through there pretty swiftly which is what it's all about trying to anticipate what is likely to happen next can see the increase in selling pressure here on the on the one minute there we are <clears throat> we've gone through this region here which is another level on a on a faster chart so we've gone through that which uh, could have come into play and hasn't we're now moving down into a low vo volume uh, area on the on the volume point of control itself so we're starting to break down in other words we're moving away from the volume point of control now and bearish sentiment has won the tug of war if you will which is all this is about it's about considering the volume and the sentiment that is driving this particular market and which is heavier have we got heavier weight towards the bearish side or have we got heavier weight towards the bullish side 
low volume here, very light in terms of these little levels here. On the accumulation distribution indicator, which is what you're looking at here, these are all based on price. So this is traditional, conventional, price-based support and resistance. Where the lines are very thin, it means that level has perhaps only been tested once. Where they are thicker, as here, then these have been tested and held two or three or four times. And each time that's tested, they thicken accordingly. It's one of the abuses of the indicator. It actually gives you a heads up visual exactly on the strength of these regions. And they are constantly building and rebuilding as they're tested and retested. So if we get down to one of these lightweight areas here, this should move through pretty quickly. Anything that's a, a thicker line, wider line, that is more, uh, more well developed. On MT5, it's done in a slightly different way. We have the dash lines and we have the solid lines. The solid lines are the, uh, the, the stronger, much stronger areas and the dash lines are less so. But in addition to that, you also have the cluster effect where you maybe get two or three of those clustering together, particularly if you get strong levels clustering together, that is extremely strong. And the same applies on the dash levels too, where you get them clustering, then you know that increases the strength of that region. You've got to remember, these are actually pinpoint accurate. These are based off pips. These are not uh, you know, wide lines spread over 10, 15, 20 pips saying, well, this is a, a broad region. These are very precise regions on the indicators. See the volume falling away on that uh, that minor rally higher, and you've also got this this uh, region of uh, of support which is oscillating around, coming into play at that point. Let's see what's going on. Slow lower down the charts, down onto uh, what seems um, like a snail's pace on 15. Um, we are moving away from this uh, volatility trigger. We're we're trying to get away from that. Once we get down to I don't know. 75, 28, 27 or so, then you know you consider well we've we've cleared that area now and we've the volatility has died away and we're now moving back into conventional price action, waiting for the next item of news, which will then trigger further volatility. And on the much lower time frames, then the trend monitor is just signaling the fact that we are still in very much bearish territory. We've got a slight transition here because we've had this congestion phase building. So this one has gone to a darker red for the time being. And this one is uh, maintaining bright red, as you would expect, it hasn't filtered its way right through there. But you can also see here the trend line up at the top there. It's just sort of trying to roll a bit and maybe just uh, you know head on down again. It's got back up to the, I'll just pull that up, there we are. That black line there is actually the midpoint, if you will, of zero between bearish and bullish on the trend monitor with the trend line. It's got there and it looks as they may be kicking over and perhaps heading on downwards once more. So see what else is going on around on that chart. That's about it for now, I think. OK, let's um, and that, of course, is the daily, which I've already highlighted. There we are. And this level is now key. Because if this is going to break down either today or tomorrow or on the next few days, so I get rid of that, then if it, if it does, then we have a very, very strong uh, area of uh, resistance then in place and the potential to move much deeper, possibly even down to 74 and beyond and you can see it starts to see that transition taking effect on the trend monitor the other one i was looking at i'm always looking for reversals uh, as many of you know that's what i that's what i look for every single time i'm always looking for those opportunities for, for reversal on the csi let's go and have a quick look see where we are on the various time frames sorry wrong one that one there we go okay this is on five minutes um there was very strong selling of the euro on five, on 10, and on 15. No great surprise that to see such heavy selling, and it's a question of which particular pair you want to select. Um, there are 26 reasons to sell the euro right now, not least uh, the, the economy uh, is in a pretty dire shape. Uh, the German uh, uh, economy is certainly uh, in moving into recession, if not in recession. There's the IFO coming up later on this morning, which I have to say, I'm always surprised to see it flagged on Forex Factory as an orange, when to us it's a, it's a red. But there we go. That's just you know, a, a nuance of Forex Factory. And if you head over to Forex Factory, I won't do it now, but if you head over to Forex Factory, just take a look at the IFO and the trend in the IFO. It's just relentlessly downwards. Uh, and uh, you know, expect more of the same today. It's just uh, pretty darn news there. And in addition to that with the euro, not only have you got the ECB later on, and as Anne said, you've got uh, negative interest rates on the horizon, more QE, 
But in addition to that, you've also got the uncertainty over uh, Brexit, over Europe, over the UK now. Uh, and that will add a further layer of complexity to trading the euro. Uh, the uncertainty surrounding that, the fact that uh, the UK government is now um, aligned in one direction, determined to, to uh, drive it through, which certainly wasn't the case before. We will see. But all of that, and of course, that will also play out in terms of the pound. So if you're trading the pound, exactly the same. And the uncertainty also with the pound will come into play as time moves on in the next few weeks. And if there is any uncertainty and doubt as to, to whether Boris will actually get this through. And in addition to that, whether there is the possibility of a general election to for a mandate, which seems unlikely, but you never know, that will create further volatility and a huge amount of uncertainty. So there's a lot going on in terms of Europe, certainly the euro, euro pound as well. But for the time being, certainly on 15, pretty heavy selling the euro. It's just, just a question of picking out uh, which pair it is you want to want to trade as i say i'm always always looking up the uh, up the extremes i'm always looking for these reversals been a lot of uh, yen buying looks as though it's picked up the canadian dollar here right up at the top down at the bottom we've had the aussie heavy selling of the aussie overnight this is going on through here and so on and so forth that's what i'm always looking for let me just go back to the charts again uh, let's go to over here this is the indices themselves just see what's going on I've got the yen, the uh, dollar, I've got the euro and the pound down here at the bottom right. This is on five minutes, that's so pretty quick. This is uh, the yen buying. We've seen uh, pretty much uh, through, the, through the, certainly uh, overnight into early doors. Starting to pick up again into congestion, now starting to pick up some, some further yen buying going on there. In terms of the dollar, not much going on sideways. The euro, that's selling. A Little bit of a pause point coming up and this is the pound. Decent buying early doors as the market got underway, and now we're starting to see the the bearish sentiment take hold once more. Let's go back to the charts again. There we go. This is a, a nice reversal on the Euro Aussie. Let's just move that out of the way. Apologies. Let's go down to the one minute. This was London Open again, eight o'clock. What are we seeing? Uh, a lot of volume coming in, a lot of buying under this candle, big volume under there. And the move away from the, the volume point of control is uh, associated with good volume. We've got decent volume under here. We've got uh, two candles falling away here on falling volume. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that the selling pressure is pretty weak. It's falling away. If this was gonna be strong, then you see that, uh, that, that price combination associated with rising volume, not falling volume. In other words, the volume under here should be higher than under this one. It's not fallen away. So what's that tell you? It tells you that the selling pressure is diminishing and therefore it's likely to be a continuation of the bullish trend, which is certainly the case right now. But that's really the candle that gives you a heads up. And what it also reveals in terms from a volume price analysis perspective is this, that when you see these signals come in, do not expect it to happen immediately. I can't tell you how long it took us to understand that when we first started 20 odd years ago. Because once you start reading a chart, you get very excited when you, you, you get that sense that you can actually read what is gonna happen next. And when you see these signals come in, you see the anomalies, that's a straightforward anomaly because uh, all things being equal under that sort of volume, if that was heavy selling pressure under there, this candle should have closed wide and down. It hasn't. It's closed with a wick to the lower body, well over halfway up the candle, ton of volume underneath. So what does that infer? It means there's buying in there. It has to be. It can't be anything else because if it was selling, the candle would have closed, as I say, widespread and down. It hasn't. It's closed uh, up or well, certainly two thirds up at any rate. So the buying is definitely there. It's come in. And once you see these anomalies, it's very easy to jump in and think, oh, fantastic. You know, this is going to reverse literally off the next candle. And then bear in mind obviously this is a minute time frame so it's not long to wait but this could be a five minute could be a 15 minute could be an hourly candle and if you've got to wait a few hours for this to develop that seems like a lifetime but that's a fact occasionally you do see them reverse uh, instantly you'll see signals and the market will will reverse literally on a sixpence but generally speaking as a rule of thumb, I would say that is not the case. You have to wait and be patient. You wait for these congestion phases to build. You wait for further volume signals to come in, and then you start to wait for the move away. 
if it does indeed develop. So decent volume under this one, breaking higher. We've gone through this level here, so we've got a, a half decent platform of support in underneath. We're now running into pretty high volume here, which is why the market is pausing. You're now starting to see some weakness come into this little minor trend. I appreciate this is only you know five or six pips, but nevertheless, the principles are exactly the same. This could be 20 pips, whatever. It doesn't matter, 30 pips it makes no difference. The principles are exactly the same. The trend monitor has transitioned. It's gone through the spectrum from bright red into dark red, dark blue, out the other side into bright blue. So it's helping to support that sentiment that the trend has broken down and we've got a full-blown reversal underway. In terms of where this is likely to go next, we've got weakness signaled here. So we're expecting it at this point and think, OK, fine. You know, this looks pretty weak because we've now got selling coming in here. We've got a candle that's tried to rally. Decent wick to the upper body, decent volume below. So there's selling in there. So maybe, you know, it's 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 the the, the, the buyers who've made their money in here. They're now getting out of this market, heavy selling. And, uh, you know, this market is going to reverse lower. Does it mean it's a full blown reversal? Not necessarily. It just means you've got short term weakness involved. And what that means from a trading perspective, if you're a scalping trader and you see this coming in, then, you know, at the very least, I would maybe not close out. But if you've got multiple contracts, maybe you've, uh, you're scaling out as a, as a tactic. So you're trading this with a handful of contracts, then you'd certainly remove some of them at that point and bank some profit. Because you know for a fact with that weakness, there is going to be at the very least some congestion, possibly a full blown reversal developing in due course. Much will now depend on these levels below, whether they come into play or not. If they do, that may well provide the necessary platform of support for a leg up higher. If we do manage to just move that out of the way, get the chat box out of the way. If we do manage to move up to uh, this sort of 79 area, so another five or six pips higher, then you've got very light volume ahead. Not a great deal in the way of uh, price-based resistance. You can see it's just testing that now as I'm talking. But uh, you've got price resistance overhead. But if, if the market did continue higher, then from a trading perspective, you know, this looks uh, pretty positive because the volume here is not going to create a barrier of resistance to the move higher. Looks as though we're breaking down anyway, so it's not going to come into play for the time being. But that's the way to read the chart because... What you're looking for all the time is you're looking for the opportunity that that is likely to deliver uh, in terms of not the ridiculous two to one, three to run, risk reward, all of that nonsense, I'm afraid. Sorry, I do have fairly strong opinions about that. So forgive me if that's something that you follow, but I'm afraid it's nonsense. The market doesn't care what you need in terms of um, a, a return on your investment, if you will. The way to, to gauge the opportunity is to do it on the chart, to look at the chart and consider in taking this trade, what is on the chart that is going to cause that market to pause or reverse or go into congestion? And if it's if it has the ability as a scalping trader to deliver for you maybe 10 pips, let's say, and you look at that chart, and you think, actually, I'm comfortable with that. That's fine. That's what it comes down to. It's using the chart to give you that information, that heads up information as to, OK, if I put my money on in the market, what is this likely to deliver from a chart based perspective, not from some ridiculous risk reward perspective? I'm sorry, but that's the fact the market doesn't care what you want or need or require. You just do it off the chart because the chart gives you that information. It tells you where the market is like to pause and congest. It tells you what barriers are in the way. It tells you what platforms of support and resistance you've got, which may or may not potentially come into play and use it in that way with multiple time frames. OK, I'm just going to go to the pound CAD because I promised I would. Just checking out the other time frames. You can see the weakness coming in here. We've got a ceiling there that's come into play. Pivot to the upside forming. And, uh, you know, it's all shaping up another pivot here. It's just, uh, you know, weakness coming in. And uh, down onto the daily, we've got this uh, very narrow spread candle and obviously no change in the trend monitor at that time. Right, let me just put the pound CAD up, GBPCAD. There we go. Let's have a quick look at that. And I think it was the daily. Okay, there we go. That's the daily chart. Oh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the daily. Um, as I said earlier, I'm not going to uh, you know hedge around. If, if 
you're looking at the pound CAD then, or indeed any pound pair, that is going to be heavily influenced by politics, by what goes on. Uh, it's not so much about the fundamentals. It's certainly about the technical, but it's very much to do with politics. And as we always say, there are four that are... We've always maintained that you know trading forex is a three-dimensional approach: the the relational, the technical, and the fundamental. But increasingly now it's four dimensions because you have the politics. You have the politics in America, you've got the politics in Europe, and you've got the politics in the UK. In terms of uh, in terms of from a chart perspective, that is now starting to to demonstrate some some bullish momentum. Certainly from the trend monitor, you can see here it's a transition from bright red. We've got a, a dark red now building on the chart. You can see the trend line here. Is starting to flatten off down here and starting to rise. If it gets through the midpoint here, then uh, we may well see some further bullish momentum develop for that and through into this low volume node. So going back to the volume point of control if we uh, and the opportunities, if you were looking at that as an opportunity for maybe a longer term uh, position, and I'm not suggesting it because we don't offer uh, trading uh, uh, suggestions, trading entries, trading entries. So, you know, it, this is purely my view of this particular chart. If you were looking at this, then you'd be looking at the volume point of control, low volume node here, and a potential opportunity going back to what I was saying earlier on of, you know, where is the market likely to run into difficulty from a technical perspective? Well, certainly once it gets up to this level where you've got, to, you know, much deeper volume starting to build all the way through up to this region here. So it's certainly not going to climb that far. Um, but certainly from a from a mini position, if you will, you know this is a potentially a, what a, a 200 or 300 pip move if you're if you're looking at that as a longer term perspective. But as I say, you know the pound can turn on the sixpence. It's still very bearish. There are more reasons to short the pound than to go long. And of course, the other aspect to it will be what about the Canadian dollar? You know what's the Canadian doing? It's all very well seeing bullish uh, sentiment in the pound. But if, if that isn't counterbalanced by weakness in the Canadian dollar, then that particular chart isn't going to move very far. It's as simple as that. So the two have to balance one another. Yeah, I think that's about it on the pound cap. Let's just go back to where we were. Oh, sorry, we're on that chart. I'm talking about uh, which pair were we on? Um, let's just have a quick look at the Aussie yen. Let's see where we're doing in terms of sentiment. And now that uh, that bearish sentiment we saw is is just taking hold once again. And if we can have a quick look at the indices, finally, let's just see what's going on there. There we go. And it's pretty pretty weak at the moment. Not uh, not huge strength. And in terms of where they all are, which we'll look at later on, but this is where all the indices are. Very nervous, trying to break out into new high ground. All the trade wars, tariffs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all coming into play, and there's some pretty nervous, uh, nervous levels up there on the dailies. I'm going to pass back to Anna. Oh, yep. Oh, God. are we over time? Of oh, course we are. Sorry, way over time as usual. We will be back later. We are back at uh, 12:45 uh, UK time. Uh, while we wait for Draghi, so that should be interesting. So we'll have the euro up and uh, look at the euro pairs. And just as an aside, one of the great pairs that uh, we always look at, certainly uh, our time getting through London, is the euro Aussie because you get great cross flows between the, the Far East the markets and into Europe. So don't dismiss the cross currency pairs. Euro Aussie is one of the best. Certainly moves quickly. You get nice trades in there, as I say, because of those cross flows. We will be back later. I hope you've enjoyed it today. Thanks very much for coming along today. And we will see you at 12.45 UK time and bye for now.